um, coming up with uh, this kind of different twist on social media education versus uh, the typical class we see is sort of what not to do. Uh, and I think most of us know what not to do uh, and we don't get caught up in that. But uh, social media can be used uh, in a positive light uh, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, also, just really quickly, um, don't kill yourself trying to scribble down everything like references, websites that, that I refer to. Um, on my uh, blog on the EMS siren, um, at the end of the class, uh, I'm gonna uh, press publish. Um, there will be all the links to the references that, that uh, I talked about and some other interesting uh, information that I found useful for social media. Um, and so the site is uh, the emsiren.com and it'll be on the right hand side under social media. So you can find everything there. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I have been a, a career and volunteer provider in the New Jersey tri-state area for the last 22 years. I started out as a, an EMS explorer, uh, as a teenager, um, and then moved through various uh, models of EMS. Uh, if, if there is one, I probably worked in it somehow. We have a lot of variety here. Um, maybe uh, four years, um, I met my mentor, that's this gentleman right here, um, appropriately enough on social media. Um, a mutual friend um, was having some drama in a forum and, and uh, we entered the discussion or the fray, if you will, uh, and became friends that way and kind of organically, um, you know, began this uh, mentorship. Uh, so next, next picture. Uh, and that led to um, me blogging. So, uh, this was uh, an appearance on the Metacast here. Um, my blog led to uh, some notice. My blog and social media use led to some notice uh, by other EMS bloggers, uh, Jamie Davis uh, uh, and a few others. Um, and they kind of uh, helped me out to guide me. Uh, next, next picture. Uh, which also led to uh, me being able to participate. And I, I was able to participate before, but maybe not uh, to the extent, um, you know, the impact that I, I would have had otherwise. Uh, this is uh, NAEMT's EMS Day on the Hill. Um, and I don't work for them, but I will tell you that uh, if you get the chance to go, you should. It's a great experience. This is uh, Representative Leonard Lance that we had the opportunity to speak with. Um, and it, it was just uh, an amazing experience, a lot of gravitas, uh, being able to be in the nation's capital and, and be involved in, in the lobbying process, particularly for, for EMS. Um, next slide. Uh, which, all of this over time, all of this didn't happen right away, um, but over time uh, I got to teach uh, at regional, state, and national conferences. Uh, this one I believe was at the uh, Connecticut EMS Expo. Uh, next slide. Which led to being published, uh, and this, uh, is an article in EMS World Magazine from earlier this year uh, on preparing for patients with hoarding disorder uh, and kind of what EMS should understand and expect when they go into scenes. Um, so kind of using social media positively um, to promote myself and uh, the topics that I'm interested in uh, have kind of led to even me being here today. Next slide. So, at this point, uh, social media is here to stay. Uh, it's integrated into our, our everyday lives. We use different applications on a smartphone to uh, order taxis via uh, Uber or Lyft. Um, and those things are, are even being integrated into our, our everyday EMS uh, life in, in some parts of the country uh, as alternate forms of transportation uh, for patients. Um, but we use Google Maps and you can find reviews for restaurants there. Um, we're connected to family members that maybe we never would have spoken to. Um, I found various family members that live all across the country while I was doing my family tree. Um, so I get to have a relationship with them um, versus maybe uh, just knowing a name. Uh, and as far as EMS, uh, you can develop relationships with other uh, like-minded EMS providers all across the country at this point. Um, the benefits 
of, of this are, um, you know, you can promote your business. So if you have an education company, um, if you're kind of a freelance educator like myself, um, you can promote yourself uh, or, um, you know, as, as I've done, different topics you're interested in, whether it's, uh, you know, career development for EMS providers or hoarding or, um, you know, mental health awareness for providers. Um, you can use uh, various sites that we're going to talk about, um, various tools that we're going to talk about for uh, a portfolio. So if you're applying for a job or if you want to get published uh, and, and you're into writing or you want to get to the next level, you can say, oh, well, some of my work's online or people will just go and find it for themselves. Uh, and of course, this is also beneficial for education uh, with YouTube. If you tape your, your lectures, um, that's a great reference. Uh, to say, oh, uh, well, do you want to see my work? Some of it's on, on YouTube. Let me send you the link. Um, next slide, please. So um, I think this is the big, the big takeaway today. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about some, some technical things like apps. We're going to talk about tools to use like blogging and, and podcasts. But the underlying cornerstone is that you can't use social media to impress people. And this is, this is even, um, you know, an everyday life principle, right? When you're trying to impress somebody, that doesn't really always work. Um, helping someone, doing something for someone, uh, people remember that. Uh, it impacts them. Um, this photo right here, uh, this is firefighter Casey Lassard, and I might be saying his name wrong. Um, this was in Mississippi. Uh, there was a car accident with one adult and five children, and they're waiting for uh, another ambulance to come to transport this patient. Um, and he got on the ground, and, and on his smartphone, he pulled up Happy Feet to, you know, keep her calm, to keep her distracted while they were waiting. Uh, you know, this probably could have had uh, a much more stressful reaction um, for this patient uh, if this wasn't an option or if he hadn't been thinking quickly on his feet. Um, so people respond to real, uh, and I think that we experience this uh, in our, our EMS practice as, as clinicians. Uh, patients respond when we're honest with them, when we're real with them, uh, and that, that authenticity is the root. Uh, you can't catfish people, right? So you can't fake it. Eventually, um, you know, the idea is that you start out with social media, you introduce yourself, um, and then you meet these people in person. They're going to realize that, you know, you've been faking it all along. So um, EMS people will sense it, particularly in our industry. Um, we know in our gut when, when people aren't quite right. Uh, and eventually that'll happen. So of anything, use social media as a tool to impact people and be real about it. Next slide, please. So uh, we have many tools in our, our ambulances. Um, we have whole trucks to, to carry all of them around, uh, and they're, they're ever increasing. We're always adding new technology um, to our, our practice. Social media is another one of those tools. Um, it just relates to personal networking and um, industry promotion or, or even uh, learning our industry for if you're trying to um, expand your career move into leadership, move into education. Um, as an agency, obviously this, this could include uh, public health promotion or um, here in New Jersey during Hurricane Sandy, social media was used by our OEMS um, and other OEM organizations to put out warnings, to put out updates. Um, and I, I find in emergency management, um, social media is really used um, to the nth degree for that, which is great. Uh, but for your agency, you could also um, put out information on programs you might offer. So community paramedicine, if you have that. Patient education, maybe you have um, a, few different, um, a few different issues, like maybe you have a lot of asthmatics, or you have a lot of diabetics, or you have a lot of uh, patients with CHF, or you have a, a very high population uh, elderly community. You can put out patient education on, on some of those things. Um, for for the individual, obviously, uh, I've mentioned my experience. Um, 
you know, you can put yourself out there, you can get a better job, you can learn things, um, you can build a network. Um, so I, I would say, uh, overall, as an industry, we need to stop being afraid of social media. And yes, in, in any industry, in, in any instance, with anything, there are always going to be a few bad apples that are really uh, glaring uh, and seem to spoil the bunch. But um, we need to be aware of how we can use this uh, so that uh, those few bad things uh, don't pop to the top. Next slide, please. Okay, I can't see uh, if it loaded up. There we go. Uh, so uh, electronic storytelling. Um, there's a gentleman, Ted Setla. Uh, he does beautiful cinematography uh, to tell stories of EMS agencies and, and other uh, organizations. Uh, and he recently did um, the, the most recent ad series result that just came out a few weeks ago. Um, and I was uh, cruising around on LinkedIn the other day um, and he put up this quote and I, I asked him if I could share it and he agreed. Uh, and I really think that um, this really describes uh, kind of the essence of, of what we need to achieve with, with social media uh, in, in that idea of impacting people. Uh, and he says, what I know to be true is that ever since I was a kid, I remember stories. As a paramedic, I told stories to the receiving facilities, other paramedics and EMTs. So why is it so hard to believe that the best way to help people understand your product or service is to tell a story. So we all know EMS providers love stories, right? We get around the table or we're hanging out in the back of the ER uh, and, and we're telling stories. Or you go to a class and sometimes you get that one educator that loves to tell war stories. Um, or you're at the restaurant or bar afterwards and, and we're always telling stories uh, to communicate parts about us, to educate others about us, to um, explain our experiences. Uh, and so I would say after helping others, impacting others, this is uh, the next key concept, concept to success. Um, Simon Sinek, uh, and again, this will be all on my website uh, with links to, uh, to this video and kind of his concepts on uh, start with why. Uh, and he's talking about leadership and inspiration and marketing. Um, but he, he really says that why is the why you do what you do, your mission, your belief, your purpose, your cause. Um, and once people understand what you're about, whatever you have to teach them, whatever you have to, to sell them, whatever you have to offer them, if they trust your why, all of that, all of that other stuff just follows right after it. Uh, and obviously, he's, he's a little more elegant about it. Um, but that's a great resource to understand storytelling, to understand that connection with, with people, that initial connection with people. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's where I make a disclaimer. Um, in conversations uh, with a variety of people, my family, my friends, other, other EMS providers, um, or uh, you know, acquaintances I meet, um, they always say, you know what, you're, you're always working, you're always doing something. Uh, yes, I am. So uh, I still work as a clinician, I'm an educator, but I also do this stuff. I develop programs so that um, we can have these discussions. Uh, and so what I would say is that I'm sure you already know, uh, living life and, and particularly living this EMS life, that this is not gonna be easy, right? So there is some time investment. Uh, and that includes learning the apps so that you can best use them. And, and of course, when they update their, their algorithms and, and how the feeds work. Uh, so there's always a, a learning curve there. Learning uh, the websites that you might use. So that the, um, maybe if you use WordPress or Blogger or a podcast hosting site, um, you know, you have to learn the, the nuances of that. Um, developing content. So there's some research involved. Uh, and I'm sure you guys know that from uh, developing your own classes or preparing for classes. Um, making edu memes, and those are my new favorite thing. I have some examples for you guys um, later on. Uh, but, you know, finding the, to make those things sometimes takes a little time. Um, and then, of course, the whole purpose of, of some of this is reaching out to network. So 
you've uh, made this foundation, but just like any other relationship, friendship, um, you know, professional relationship, um, interaction with people at work, you still have to devote some time to, to nurture those things. Um, and so that's where time reinvestment comes in. Um, ultimately, you may not be the most talented at graphics or writing or whatever thing you're going to do, cinematography or, or using YouTube or, or any of those things. But if you work hard, you'll beat anybody else, even if they have a lot of talent and they're just sitting around. So um, there's, there's a great quote that says, um, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. Uh, so don't be afraid of, oh, I don't know how to do any of this. Honestly, I don't know how to do, or in the beginning, I didn't know how to do any of this. And I'm still learning as I go um, to make my, my uh, content development uh, smoother or, um, you know, to use new technologies. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly learning those things to make my stuff better for, for you guys. Next slide. So social media use by age. Uh, I was kind of curious uh, through some conversations talking about uh, when I was prepping for this and doing the research, um, some people came back and, and, you know, their contribution or suggestion was, oh, well, you know, are you really going to be able to reach all the, the age groups that, that are in, involved in EMS, right? So uh, we have some, some new people, what, uh, what most folks would call uh, millennials that are just starting out their career in EMS. And, and obviously, um, you know, we see here 89%. Right, so these people, um, young adults, grew up with the internet. They don't, they don't know, you know, having to wait for somebody to call you back. It, it just automatically happens at this point for them. Uh, they don't know any of that. And then, um, you know, 30 to 49 year olds, um, we kind of were becoming adults when the internet came out. Um, maybe 22 years ago, 20 years ago, when when it first became for for mass public consumption. So 82%, that's pretty good. Um, what surprised me though was um, maybe not so much 50 to 65 year olds at 65% because um, through work integration, bringing the internet um, and technology into the workplace, maybe uh, those people that weren't early adopters naturally were kind of forced into using new technologies. What really surprised me is almost half of all 65 year olds and older use social media um, and kind of maybe it shouldn't have been so surprising my mom um, doesn't use a lot she uses LinkedIn she knows how to use Google um, you know as far as social media that's that and you know her email that's really it uh, other than her her um, work accounting program uh, but she knows how to find me on Google and she surely knows how to stalk me to see you know what I'm up to or what I'm doing and sometimes she'll pop out with oh, how did such and such project go and I'm like, how did you know? I didn't tell you about that. She like, oh, I, I saw you on LinkedIn. I saw you on Google. Um, so I think the the comment that, um, or, or the idea that, uh, oh, you know, we can't reach everybody with this. Well, first of all, but you could reach some of the people with this. Um, and then obviously these numbers kind of prove that maybe we're reaching more people than, than we anticipated via social media. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, so remember how I, I just mentioned, um, you know, learning new apps and ways to do things. So I made this slide myself. I'm, I'm, it's kind of basic, but I'm pretty proud. Um, and it wasn't that difficult. Um, so uh, social media use by application. And again, this to me, um, I put these four. There's, there's a bunch of different apps. And uh, if you're very creative, um, I'm sure you could find ways to, to use those, those apps that are not listed on here creatively uh, for you know, whatever your promotion is. Um, however, I, I picked these four because I use them most, most of the people that I know use them most uh, for professional use. Um, so Facebook, and, and these numbers are recent as of this month. So Facebook, uh, earlier uh, in the month, um, they made a, an announcement that they just hit 2 billion unique users. Now this is not just the United States. Uh, these are international numbers. Um, Instagram, uh, that's the next one, 700 million unique users. Um, uh, Twitter, um, 313 million unique users. Um, and then in, um, LinkedIn at 106 million. Uh, what really surprised me about this uh, 
was Twitter and LinkedIn. Obviously, Facebook is used by a vast array of people. Uh, even my granny has a Facebook. I just found out yesterday. So um, uh, it was her birthday, and everybody said happy birthday, and then she liked my comment. And I was like, oh, no, granny's on Facebook. Uh, so now I have to I have to be a little, a little more well-behaved on my personal page. Um, but uh, so obviously, Facebook, um, you know, it seems like everybody's involved. Um, Instagram, okay. You know, photo sharing, um, a lot of people use it for um, self-promotion, marketing, um, mentoring, business services. So, okay, I can understand that. Um, what I feel really in EMS is uh, one of the, the better used applications uh, for, for EMS research and um, learning and um, networking is Twitter. Uh, I really was, uh, and I'll talk a little more about this. I was a late adopter, uh, and I was pleasantly surprised at how great Twitter is. Um, I've met a lot of EMS people. I found a lot of EMS research, um, and I've integrated with a bunch of different groups on there. So I, I thought that Twitter would, would be a little higher in the numbers, uh, but apparently not. Uh, and then LinkedIn, I thought, would also be a little higher, just because um, who doesn't need a job? Next slide, please. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those four apps, um, kind of some features that I think are, are great for us to use. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, uh, depending on your, your level of creativity and your comfortableness with technology, you know, you could you can find other ways to use it as well. So um, Facebook has personal pages, obviously. Uh, they also have business pages. So I have both. Um, I have my personal page. Um, for my friends and family, uh, granny now. And, um, you know, I share the geeky things I like, like Game of Thrones, um, you know, cats, recipes, pictures of my niece. Uh, so basic stuff like that. Um, and I think that you could also use these things depending on your level of being comfortable with people knowing personal things about you or how personal you share things on, on Facebook. You might be careful of that. Uh, but I use it so that people can know me as a person. Um, again, that goes back to your why. Um, so my passion for any of the topics that I teach, you know, that, that goes back to the core of me as a whole person, uh, not just as an EMS provider. Uh, and for the business page, um, I do kind of double post on those. Um, I'll post the same thing. Maybe my commentary will be a little different. Um, for my business page, I do have other followers on there um, that just follow my business page. They don't follow um, me personally. Um, you can also act as an admin on groups, uh, on other group pages. So maybe there's five or six of you or two or three of you. Um, and it's a, a group page uh, for, uh, I don't know, uh, EMS for children or provider mental health or uh, any of those things uh, related to EMS or any other interests that you have um, that you're tying in. Um, and being an admin kind of helps uh, because you, you, you still get that interaction with uh, people that might not follow you directly. Um, Facebook also has uh, Facebook Live. So uh, there's another app called Periscope that um, I know a lot of the fire service educators have been using to kind of give little snippets of their classes. So maybe they're doing a, a live burn class with certain techniques. Uh, Bill or um, uh, there's a, a guy from New Jersey, uh, instructor John Dixon. Um, I saw a couple of uh, periscopes or Facebook lives with him where they were doing um, extrication. So some of the techniques, uh, he had somebody videotape and he talked about what they were doing. Um, and he didn't videotape or, or um, you know, stream the whole class. Uh, but little snippets so that um, people would, would get that information, but also it kind of plants the seed for people to be uh, interested in maybe coming to one of your classes. Uh, and so Facebook has Facebook Live. You could do the same thing. Somebody, uh, you know, you enlist one of your friends that's uh, at your class, uh, or maybe, um, you know, you want to do a, a promo spot for your blog, or if you're doing podcasting, um, you know, you set up an idea and, and you just videotape a little snippet give them a little taste, and then you provide the link and, and they click into uh, 
whatever it is you're, you're promoting or your content. Um, I think Facebook is a little more informal and impersonal. Um, like I said, it shows maybe the whole person. Um, I would say be aware though, um, in some of the groups, uh, sometimes the, the commentary gets a little wild and um, uh, I'm sure you've all noticed in some of, some of the uh, forums, uh, the, there gets to be some personal attacks, people get a little offended. Um, on occasion, they feel, uh, you know, when somebody's trying to send their point that, that they're uh, assailing you. Uh, there are people that are, are, you know, key players in the EMS industries uh, that are in those groups, and they see what's going on. They might not comment, and they probably never will comment, but please know that they notice, and they notice who says these things. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe if, if if you need to reply to something and you're a little heated about it, take a step back, just like we would in real life, because um, this is an extension of real life. Um, take a step back and, and and maybe don't comment or give it some time so that you cool down and, and your comment's not as aggressive. Next slide. Okay, so my uh, my technical issues, Matt, just so you know, um, I think that my internet just went down altogether. So um, okay. I'm just going to keep saying next slide and uh, I'll hope that it popped up. So the next slide is about LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn um, is for uh, professional interaction and it has some similarities with Facebook. Um, so there's groups on there. Um, most of the, the letter agencies, I know um, NAMSI has a group on there um, where they post information and, and uh, people can have discussions, uh, NAMT, uh, any of those groups, that I think most of them have um, a LinkedIn group. Um, I can't speak to the veracity with which it is used by the people in it. Um, there are also um, like NFPA kind of um, people that, that want to discuss uh, other issues within uh, our industry, whether it's fire, EMS, education, um, I, I'm sure that, that they have a lot going on out there as well. Um, so just do a search and, and most of those will pop up. Um, LinkedIn, pretty much for me, I use as a portfolio. Uh, I use it as my resume, um, maybe like a more integrated resume, right? So I have links to my writing. There's a section on there for publications. There's projects. There's a section for uh, awards, um, volunteer experience. Uh, and my recommendation for, for LinkedIn is fill all that stuff out. Maybe you don't have time to do it all in one sitting, but eventually tinker away with it, you know, 10 minutes here, half an hour there, uh, and eventually the whole thing will pop up. And also uh, put up a good photo uh, of you, uh, a nice headshot. Um, again, you don't have to go out and, and pay hundreds of dollars for them. Uh, find a, a neutral background and have somebody take a nice picture of you when you're looking nice one day um, and pop that up there so that people can equate a face with the information that they're seeing. Um, there is a section on LinkedIn to publish articles. So uh, if you if you kind of want to have a blog presence, but you don't want to go through setting up a, a blog hosting site and a URL and um, you know all of that, uh, you don't want to go to that extreme. You just want to put your comments out there on occasion. Um, this is um, a great resource. Um, they have um, influencers. So there's people like Richard Branson from uh, Atlantic uh, Airlines. Um, he puts out different articles. Uh, there's a variety of people. I think Simon Sinek even uh, pops in there sometimes as an influencer. Um, but your stuff is being published as well. Uh, so I use it. Um, I take, I just copy and paste whatever's on my blog. I put it into their format, I tweak it a little bit so that it looks nice, uh, and then I put it up. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing that you're getting on each site, but it gets me a little more traffic to my site. So again, I give people a little taste of, of my work or whatever topic I'm talking about or, or educating on, um, and then they click into my social media, my website, my other um, articles or whatever I happen to be doing at the time. Uh, and there's also a, um, a job search mechanism. So there are recruiters on LinkedIn. Uh, so I would keep this uh, much more just related to work. Um, and uh, the recruiters sometimes will contact you. 
uh, sometimes uh, LinkedIn has an algorithm where they pop up jobs that they feel you might be suited for uh, based on the industry you work in or uh, you know, their assessment of some of the things that, that are on your uh, profile. Next page. So Instagram. Uh, initially, um, I had an Instagram just for my personal stuff because I like to travel. Um, and initially, I, was, I, I wondered, you know, how can I integrate this into EMS? Um, this is great for, for those edu memes, so education memes, um, or um, whatever other uh, education visuals that you have. Um, if you have infographics, um, that kind of stuff. Sometimes I'll post a photo. Um, so if I'm going to a conference and they have a logo, I will post the logo and the link for registration. Um, some information or their hashtag, uh, you know, so that so that people have that information, they know where I'm going next. Um, sometimes, uh, if it's, uh, I'll include uh, a photo that is related to uh, a blog that I'm putting out or um, an article that I'm putting out. Uh, I'll I'll put that up and then I'll put the, the URL so that people can can uh, find it for themselves. Uh, and then, of course, I, I also put, uh, you know, my, my travels to conferences or places that are related. <laughs> Excuse me. So I like to share those things, again, that, that more interpersonal connection, um, you know, so that people understand my why a little better. Uh, and I've also gotten a lot of followers from other industries. So um, I've gotten some followers from marketing, uh, other writers, other bloggers. Um, you know, from also from emergency medicine, so DOC, um, and uh, some of the fire service. Uh, so I have a good variety on, on Instagram of, of um, people that interact with my content. Next slide. So Twitter. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when we first started, I was really a late adopter, and I really fought tooth and nail about using Twitter. I was not feeling it. I didn't get that you know, why would they only give you 140 characters? So that's characters, that's spaces, special characters like the at sign and, and the hashtag, um, you know, including your words. How would anybody ever understand all of this if, if I only have like half a sentence to use? Um, however, uh, after reading and kind of uh, poking around, um, I discovered that there's so much out there. Um, the general public, uh, it, some of the more recent international um terror incidents um people have posted before the news outlets have so people are using this uh, one for safety um so that people know they're safe and to put up information about don't come to this area because this is what's going on um you know and and to provide news real-time news uh for other people um and sometimes that's good and sometimes not so much because maybe you don't want all of that to get out there right away um but just generally for the general population, uh, people are really taking advantage of, of Twitter. Um, so there's something called uh, FOMED. So uh, free online access uh, education, so medical education. Um, and uh, a lot of um, paramedics, critical care, emergency medicine, HEMS, which is helicopter EMS, if you're not familiar, uh, a lot of those uh, providers and educators have really jumped on this. So um sharing your education material or some of it for free using research uh so uh ems is kind of moving into this evidence-based medicine okay well where did you find that information you know how are you proving your point how are you backing that up or oh look at this look at this link isn't this interesting uh you know and you're able to provide like a minimal commentary um and there, there is some room for discussion underneath. You just have to keep it to your 140 characters. Um, so that's really a great tool for, for ENS and medicine. And obviously, the end result is better for our patients because we're more educated providers. Um, so uh, Twitter has allowed me, like Instagram, to integrate with a variety of medical professionals, um, researchers, docs, other EMS providers, um, other EMS leaders, other EMS educators, um, also some some uh, content brands. So, um, uh, as you noticed earlier, uh, I write for EMS World Magazine. 
Um, I contribute. Um, and so sometimes they'll retweet my stuff. Obviously, they have a bigger reach than me. Um, so another part of Twitter is a lot of interaction. So maybe, um, you know, you put out some content and then five other bloggers or influencers, if you will, um, that have many more followers than you share your information. Um, so this is uh, kind of leading to a, a concept called uh, creation, right, where you wrote or made an edgy graphic or wrote um, an article or produced a podcast. Um, so that's your content creation. You put it out there and then other people curated it, right? So just like at a museum, um, maybe French artists from the 1830s, um, you know, you're going to make an exhibit. Well, other, um, other Twitter users, um, particularly, you know, within their industry, will share other content um, or articles or research or education, um, and that's curation. Uh, so I do both. So I do, uh, obviously, I have a blog, I write, uh, I do some other things, um, but then I also curate other articles, other research that kind of go along with that theme. Um, and, and this works for both of you, right? So obviously your, your viewers get, um, get the best of both worlds because they have a broader view of the topic. But then also it benefits you because other people are sharing your thing and you're sharing theirs uh, and you get the notice of both. Um, there's something else uh, I would like to mention, uh, 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 hashtags. So um, hashtags are, are super important. Um, and I think we could jump to the next slide for this one. All right, so hashtags, that's this little symbol. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to just play tic-tac-toe with it, or it was that little button that used to annoy people with on the phone. Um, now we call it a hashtag. So uh, I would say you can use these on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook also uses hashtags. Uh, you can go on, on Google and put in a hashtag and a search will will pop up um, but essentially uh, they increase your reach uh, and when I started using hashtags I got a big uptick in followers in um, in clicks in likes uh, in retweets um, and then I noticed on my on my personal blog I um, my uh, viewership rose not a lot but a little bit and every little bit helped uh, so essentially um, if you don't know you put that little hashtag and then a phrase or a word without spaces all together right after it. Uh, and then somebody will go into the search engine on any one of these apps, or as I mentioned on Google, they'll put the same thing. Uh, you know, maybe they want to look up um, pot roast recipes. So they'll put hashtag pot roast recipes, pot roast recipes will pop up, um, you know, for, for EMS, uh, you know, you put EMS, paramedics, if, if you want to be a little more general. Um, you know, EMS for children, if you're into pediatrics, uh, any number of, of uh, things. Um, and this allows others to find you. Um, maybe they, they find you through the hashtag, see your content, and, and now they follow you um, and subscribe to you. Uh, and, and likewise for, for us to do the same. Um, one caveat though, unique isn't always better. So, um, you know, maybe hashtag my grandma's cookies are the best ever. And I'm my grandma's better than yours. Maybe all of that is just a little bit too much. You have to think about is somebody else going to think of this hashtag uh, and and search it out. Uh, so unique isn't always better. Although some people do use it as a little bit of tongue in cheek. Next slide, please. So um, these aren't necessarily applications to use for social media. But these are ways to create content. Um, and I'm going to talk about blogging, podcasting, uh, and blogging. Uh, so blogging is kind of how I got into all of this. Um, and it can be self-posted, or you can be part of a blog group. Um, I have some of the blog groups listed uh, in that uh, list of resources for you. Um, I would advocate purchasing your own URL. So for myself, it's the emssiren.com. Uh, um, because when you use uh, other other um, blog sites, 
if you're not developing your own website, which is a, a little intensive, and if you're not technologically advanced, like I am not, um, you know, maybe you don't want to start out with that. Um, so I'm Uh, so uh, it redirects, and I would advocate that because it's a lot easier in conversation just saying the EMS siren rather than having to explain all the little dots and periods and things that you have to put. Um, so not only for writing, right? So if you do photography or um, if you have a podcast and you want to uh, have a little written word with it, um, Ginger Locke from uh, Medic Mindset, uh, she has a written blog and then she links her podcast into it uh, and she uses um, the written blog for her resources. So uh, if she references uh, a clinical technique or a book or something like that, she puts show notes in her blog so that you can go back and find that kind of like I made the, the resource sheet for you guys. Um, I used it to break in as my portfolio. So when I was uh, trying to get into writing for uh, an EMS publication, um, you know, obviously the demonstration of my writing skills or, or the topics that, that I discussed uh, was very evident online. Anybody could find it. Uh, it also leads to quick publishing. So you can post topics others might not, um, might not want to talk about on a broader platform. Uh, so there, there can be some controversy there. And if there's a topic or um, an event that happens, you can jump out there first uh, and have your commentary first. Um, I would use caution though not to rant. So um, if, if you always talk about the problems in EMS, but you never have a solution, um, people are going to get tired of reading that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so podcasting, um, so similar to above, um, you know, again, I would do the URL with the link to whatever podcasting site you're using. Um, it's a great break-in portfolio. So if you're you're uh, trying to uh, get into leadership or education, et cetera, on a larger level, um, this will demonstrate your ability. Um, it's a little faster paced, obviously, because it's spoken word. Um, and you can do interview format, so you can have people onto your show, um, or you can do a lecture or both. Um, I mentioned the website, you know, the, that uh, associated blog for, for your show notes, uh, which would really help people so that they don't, you know, they're not scribbling, they're actually paying attention to what you have to say. Um, and what's great about this is people could listen to it anywhere. So if you have a large, long commute or, um, you know, maybe you have some time on Sunday afternoon, and that's when you, you want to do your continuing education. People can pop this up on, on iTunes or uh, Spreaker or any number of uh, podcast uh, distribution uh, apps uh, or sources, um, and they can pop that up and, and go through and listen to what they want to listen to. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to be there right away. Um, uh, and one of the, um, I asked for some some information on this because I don't have a podcast, so I asked my podcaster friends. Um, and one of the one of the key things that uh, they all kind of mentioned is you don't have to invest a lot of money initially, uh, but keep in mind that sound quality and volume are key. If people can't understand what you're saying, particularly in a spoken word format, um, you know they're going to click off your stuff and not come back, uh, and then you'll have more difficulty later uh, gaining followers again. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I mentioned blogging. This is um, so this is a video blog, um, and this is a little more popular in other industries. Um, I'm sure maybe some of you have seen uh, the makeup tutorials or the spoofs on makeup tutorials, uh, where young ladies or gentlemen uh, go on and give tips on how to achieve certain makeup looks. Um, and I'm not going to say that I haven't used them before. They are useful. Uh, but I haven't noticed a lot of independent EMS blogs. So if you're out there and you like to make videos, please do this. Uh, I think this would be a great resource. Um, it's similar to the podcast, right? So you could do interview or lecture format. Um, it's faster paced because there's uh, the spoken word involved. Um, and again, you can use this in conjunction with a regular blog. So maybe 
um, you tape a piece of a lecture and you put it in with the resources or um, like a small blurb and the research behind it uh, on your blog. Um, great for education. So uh, if you're out there and you're a speaker, you're trying to get more gigs, have somebody tape you, have somebody record you, put those things up on YouTube, make your own YouTube channel. Um, you know, the best EMS educator ever. This is my channel. Go there, look at it, and, and you can put up a bunch of different videos. Um, the picture here, this is Steve Whitehead, um, and he does uh, EMS One's Two Things on a variety of topics. Um, I think that's kind of a good example uh, that most people would know. Um, and now that we have these smartphones, um, this isn't as difficult as it used to be. You don't have to have a separate camera. You don't have to have separate technology. Uh, you can record something, um, you know, and, and pop it right up on, on YouTube or whatever app you're using. Um, there's a few others. Um, but, you know, it, it's pretty easy to, to access these things now. Um, you just have to get a friend maybe to hold your camera or a good tripod. Um, there is uh, another thing that um, while I was uh, gathering information, somebody made a great point to me that um, you can be an independent blogger, meaning um, like me, I don't have any sponsors. I just put information out there. So you can be independent um, or you can have sponsors um, where you maybe make a little money or get some products. Um, there's uh, a variety of methods for that. Uh, but just be aware that if you do have sponsors, you might make a little money, but you could lose some creative license, right? So if, if what you're saying isn't in line with what your sponsor has going on, um, you know, that might not flow so good for your creativity. Uh, next slide, please. So um, now that you have all this information and uh, maybe your head is spinning a little bit, um, don't be a one-trick pony. So you don't have to pick one of these things. Um, I use a variety of these things uh, for different audiences or, um, you know, different applications. Um, I use different content for, for each one or a variation of, of content for each one. Um, so, you know, you can have a blog and a podcast or you can have... Um, you know, a variety of social media applications. Um, I happen to use all four of the ones we discussed earlier, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and Instagram. Um, it'll help you reach a variety of stakeholders. Uh, so some, you know, maybe docs use Twitter more than Instagram, um, et cetera. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so. Uh, that said, who's your audience? Um, you want to focus your content to who you want to reach. So uh, EMS is kind of a very broad topic at this point. Uh, so we have EMS for children, there's rescue involved, there's healthcare involved, community paramedicine, um, maybe, you know, uh, you're a cardiology guru. Uh, EMS is, is way too broad a topic for you to say, I cover EMS. Okay. Uh, you know, what part? Uh, a great example, uh, and I mentioned cardiology, um, Tom Boothway, he, uh, there's a variety of, of bloggers on there, but he kind of spearheaded uh, EMS 12 Weed. Um, uh, so it's a great blog if you're into cardiology, um, specific, uh, and he goes out and teaches um, and, and has gotten some other uh, opportunities from that. Um, so EMS, yes, but related to cardiology. Uh, for myself, I do uh, career development like this, mental health, politics. So I focus on uh, a variety of topics, but still it's narrowed down. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't have commentary on something once in a while, but your main focus uh, should be a little narrow so that you can um, gear your content towards uh, the people that will most benefit from it. Uh, next slide, please. So um, things you might need to start out. So kind of get these things together so that while you're putting together uh, your platforms or setting up your accounts, you have it. Um, I mentioned a promo photo uh, earlier uh, on LinkedIn, having a good headshot. Um, this is kind of important because, um, you know, you want people to know who you are uh, 
when you come up and finally meet them. It also um, leads to continuity and recognition. So people say, oh, hey, here's that guy over here on Twitter, or, or here's this guy on Instagram. Um, and I try to use the same photo um, for, for all of my uh, promotional work. Um, a curriculum vitae or a resume, um, this will help a lot with LinkedIn where you can just copy and paste. You don't have to retype everything. And you're gonna need it eventually when you apply for education spots or, or for, um, for conferences, if, if you wanna do that, uh, you're gonna need it. So just develop it now. It'll help you uh, later in the long run. Um, a good email, so a professional email. You know, uh, I love chicken nuggets, 4321, might not be the best thing you wanna use for this. Uh, so um, I have the EMS siren at gmail.com. Uh, and then for work, for my clinical job, I just have my first name, my last name. Um, so uh, I have two professional emails and you know, then I have my fluffy one for, for coupons and online stuff. Um, but use, use a good email. Um, it also makes it easier for people to remember later when they're trying to think of, hey, what's that person's email and they can't find it. Um, a bio blurb kind of about you, your why, right? So a little bit about your history, where you came from, uh, you know, but, but what your, what your um, desire is. Um, and if, if you have a hard time writing about yourself, enlist a, a, a friend uh, who, who's, you know, kind of good at writing, kind of good at promotion, uh, ask them to help you out to write it. I did, uh, and my, my blurb is, is much improved from the one I originally had. Um, an editorial calendar, and I'm gonna talk about that uh, briefly in, in a moment, um, and some content to start, right? So maybe the first and second article if you're gonna write something, or maybe 10 edge memes if you're gonna do that, or infographics, um, you know, make, make a bunch of things to start. So in the beginning, you know, you have something, uh, so you don't feel so pressured to, to get everything started and put these things out there. Next slide. Uh, so these are, um, I have a few edge memes. Uh, this first one um, is a little more, um, I would say a little more complex, but easy to make. So you have the two photos um, and then um, you can put this in a meme generator and write out the text and save it and put it out. So this one is from uh, Ginger Law. Um, she, uh, she hosts uh, the Medic Mindset podcast and uh, accompanying blog. Um, and she made this edge meme. Uh, next slide, please. So you can also make a simple, a simple edge meme. So uh, Rami Duckworth uh, made this, um, and it's related to um, triage at, at active shooter MCIs. Um, so this is the, the mnemonic for uh, kind of triaging at those events, sort, uh, assess, life-saving treatment, and transport. Uh, but this is pretty simple. There's a table, some salt on it, you know, the word salt written in it, um, and there it is. There is your edge meme or your, your infographic. Um, and you can also enlist your family and friends and coworkers if you wanna make different scenes, uh, again, based on your creativity, um, to, to make these things. Next slide, please. So, um, funny always works. People like funny, right? In the middle of, of some heavy material, you crack a little joke, it lightens the mood, um, it helps. Uh, so the, the difficulty with funny is your audience needs to understand the humor or reference. So for this one, you need to understand that Plankton, um, you know, is always trying to take over the world. So what's funny is that he doesn't have a next step. Plankton always has a next step. Um, and, you know, now he's kind of stumped. Um, there should be some truth in humor just like this one, um, but you also wanna make sure it's not offensive or egregious. Next slide, please. Uh, so having an editorial calendar, I kind of found out about this a little bit into the game when I first started, um, and I might not be the best at using it. So I have one, um, but the key to having one is that you have to go back and actually follow it. Uh, and that's where my difficulty comes in. Uh, but it encourages organization, gets you on a schedule, um, integrated with all the other myriad of things that we do, uh, all our work and, and personal life. Um, you can use scheduling apps for posting. A popular one is Hootsuite, 
Um, but in, in kind of researching them for my own use, um, I've noticed that they're not all inclusive. So if you use a variety of platforms like I do, not all of them are included in there. You're still going to have to remember to go back, oh, LinkedIn isn't included in this. I'm going to have to go on there and manually post it. Uh, so I've been manually posting everything, particularly because I like to have a little variety. Um, so for that, do your research. Pick what's best for you based on you know, your assessment of, of who your audience is. The idea is, is to have some consistency. Um, the difficulty with um, with those apps that post for you is that you still have to respond to the people that comment or interact with the content you put out there. Um, so you, you can't just post it and be done. Um, you still have to come back and, and put that time reinvestment in. Next slide, please. So the big idea for um, for using social media and the biggest benefit I got out of it was getting to collaborate um, and build relationships with other um, EMS innovators, leaders, educators. Um, and this photo right here is from uh, Jamie Davis's The Medic Cast. Um, and this was in New Orleans last, uh, last year. Um, and he was kind enough uh, after, you know, th this didn't just come out the gate. He was kind enough to allow me to interview or, or invite some other people onto his show um, to his his podcast um, and have a discussion about women in EMS. He wasn't even in in the thing. Um, he had Sam Bradley come on and and host, so it would be an all female panel, um, and it was a great conversation. Uh, it worked out really great. Um, so that's that's a huge bonus, but it's also reciprocal. So um, you know, obviously, if Jamie needs something, I'm going to help him out with it. Um, you know, uh, I talk with other bloggers. Um, and other educators, and, and, you know, we work together. And social media kind of benefits that uh, based on the things that, that I've talked about. We get to know each other personally. We get to see each other's work. Um, you know, and you kind of get a sense of that person. And then later, you meet in person at industry events or, or education opportunities. Um, no one does this alone if they're truly successful. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just a small note on security. Um, security, uh, and again, when I first started, I, I didn't even think about this. I was so busy thinking about content and how am I going to get this out there. But if your social media um, accounts or your uh, website gets hacked um, or goes down for any reason, people are going to see that. Um, you know, and, and this could be a small thing, like maybe you just need to recalibrate something or you know, maybe somebody else is posting on, on your stuff. People don't know that that's not you um, until maybe it's really egregious or you put out a statement, but maybe by then, um, you know, the damage is done. Uh, and it also makes you look a little unprofessional, like why wouldn't you think about this? Um, so just a note on security, um, make sure that your computer is protected, that your internet is, is locked down, um, so there's less of a chance for somebody to pirate your, your stuff. Next slide. So now that you have all of, of that information, uh, kind of how to and uh, you know best practices, um, I, I just want to reiterate uh, the most important concept to all of this. So you could do all of these technical things uh, very well. You could excel at them. But if you're not impacting people, if people don't feel that they're getting some sort of, of value, from what you're putting out there, um, you know, you're not, you're not really going to get picked up by folks. Um, use the social media to impact people. And, and EMS folks are best suited for this, right? What do we do every day? We go out, uh, you know, we, we enter people's lives uh, as strangers on, on the worst days of their lives, and we make it better, and we fix things for them. Or maybe not permanently, but in this moment. You know, that's our goal as, as EMS providers. Uh, so we're absolutely best suited for this. Um, and in doing that, you know, we can, we can fix some of the problems in the EMS or at least affect them um, and bring interest in continuing education for providers that, that might feel stagnated in their, their regular classes that occur again and again and again and again in their community. Uh, maybe by putting some research or mnemonics out there, um, you know, they, they get a new revitalized interest in medicine. Um, an inspiration maybe to continue in EMS or 
to travel in a different avenue, um, not just a clinical role. Uh, so social media, yes, it's for our promotion, but really the idea is to benefit others. Next slide, please. Uh, so now that, that I've put all of that out there, and I know we kind of uh, ran to time, uh, does anybody have any questions? For anyone wondering, there is a question box uh, on the right hand, uh, right side panel on uh, GoToWebinar. So if you have a question, um, you can type it there and then I can re relay that to, uh, to Amy. But other than that, is that all, Amy? Uh, that is it. So you can pop up to the next slide. Um, okay. If you don't have any questions right now where you got to run off, I know that uh, I filled up the entire hour. Um, again, the, um, the social media information is on the emsiren.com. You can uh, feel free to email me your questions later, or if you come up with a question later, you can email me. Uh, I'll do my best to answer it, or I'll find somebody who can. Um, and I'm also on Twitter um, and Instagram and Facebook at the EMS Siren. All right. Thank you so much, Amy. It was a pleasure having you on the NEMSI webinar. Um, looks like that will conclude thank you so much for having this me. month's webinar. Yep. Um, if anyone would like to reference any uh, anything that was said during this webinar, it, this will be posted on the NEMSI web, website under the webinar tab. So make sure to check it out there. Also make sure to check out Amy's website, the emssiren.com. Um, other than that, uh, we will not be having a webinar next month due to the symposium. So make sure you attend the webinar in, what is it, what's September. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all right. I think we're all good to go. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. Oh, thank you.